Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're going to be talking about grid down digital communications over HF radio. And the tool we'll be using for these communications is called FT8 Call. I'm hoping by now you've seen episode 1 of the X Days Off Grid series where I demonstrate FT8 Call with my buddy Mark, Mike Zero, India Alpha X Ray. This time, with the help of Gil, Foxtrot 4, Whiskey Bravo Yankee, the radio prepper, we'll be testing FT8 call from our own unique perspectives. My goal in all of this is to understand FT8 call's reliability and effectiveness for weak signal communications in a grid-down scenario. If you can stick with me a while, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems this station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Before we can start making use of our amateur radio equipment in a grid down scenario, we also have to keep in mind we need to power that gear. Now, it doesn't really matter for operating fixed location or operating out in the field. In a grid down scenario, the requirements are basically the same. A successful deployment in a grid-down scenario requires you to be able to generate power, buffer or store that power for your station, and easily deploy your station. For this test, I'll be operating fixed location from home. This is a little corner upstairs in my home that I use to make ham radio desktop videos. I'm using a laptop, the Yaesu FT891, and I'm powering everything from the 10 amp hour battery pack we built on the channel earlier in the year. To keep my battery topped up, I'm using the 80 watts of panels I have located on the tower. Those panels generate about 4 amps whenever the sun hits them directly. Finally, those panels are feeding the Genison charge controller and the 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate pack. I'll leave you links in the description about my portable power and my station and the various configurations that I can set up in for varying scenarios. All right, let's get on to Gil. So I was out walking with my dog when I received a text message from Gil saying he was connected to my station and could I have a QSO? Now Gil and I have been trying to achieve this with various modes on various bands for quite some time. So Naturally, when I received that text message, I started running home with my dog so I could get set up and get ready. So basically, all of this was impromptu with very little time to prepare. Now, the QSO between Gil and I was basically just chit-chat, and actually, that's what we wanted. We could certainly substitute that chit-chat with any types of information for emergency communications or preparedness if we wished to do so. But let's go ahead and switch over to the screen capture so that you can follow along. I'll narrate as we go. Now, as we can see in this last message of the center box, Gil has already sent me a signal report, and that's minus 0.3 dB. Since he hears me so well already, there's no reason for me to increase my power level. So I'm going to maintain the 30 watts that I normally operate from my home station. So I'm going to start off by sending a directed message to Gil, which requires an acknowledgement or a reply. Since he's waiting for me to make this QSO, I'm almost certain he's going to send an acknowledgement or a reply back to me. So I compose my message and fire it off using enter or return. At that point, FT8 call will buffer the message and store it until the next transmit cycle. FT8 call also breaks the message apart and sends it out part by part sequentially. Now this might seem monotonous at the moment, but there are some improvements being made to improve the speed and the amount of text being sent in each transmit cycle. Now I know this might seem rather slow, but in my opinion it's better to have narrow band with highly efficient communications that are slow rather than having no communications at all. With that said, Keep in mind, I received all of Gill's messages with 100% copy. So even at QRP power levels, this is a byproduct of the very narrow bandwidth of the mode. 
Now, just in case I didn't make it back to the radio, Gil could still have sent me a directed message requiring an acknowledgement, which would have left that message as a pop-up on my screen. Anyway, my reply is on its way and we can wait for Gil's response. Now, here's something that I think is pretty insane. On the upper right side of the screen, we can see that Gil's been heard now and his signal-to-noise ratio is plus 2 dB. Again, Gil is using 5 watts with a KX2 and a Windows tablet. In contrast, I'm using 30 watts, I'm using the Yaesu FT891, and I'm using a random in-fed antenna. And now, for those people who don't understand the point of FT8 call, this is exactly the point. Low power, weak signal communications. You've already seen me do this in Lapland and that wasn't even full power with the 891. And now we're watching Gil send me messages from France to Finland using 5 watts and a tablet PC. So far I'm incredibly impressed with FT8 call. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Gil and I have tried different modes, different bands with uh, very little success. So being able to leverage FT8 call for emergency communications or prepping a grid down scenario or whatever, this is a huge step forward in amateur radio. To be perfectly honest, I can't imagine anyone's going to want to do any contesting with FT8 call. Uh, we still have FT8 for that. But the benefits of FT8 call over FT8 for um, station to station or station to a group of station communications should be obvious by now. And considering we're not even at version 1 yet, I imagine FT8 call is going to continue to get better. While we wait for my message to send out to Gil, let's take a look at the right side of the screen and explain all the information on the different lines you see there. If you take a look at the fourth line down, you can see that Foxtrot 4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee is highlighted. This focuses my station on Foxtrot 4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee exclusively. All I have to do is type in my message and his call sign and all the extras will be automatically inserted into the message. Next to his call sign, you see the minute since I heard him last. Uh, next to that, you see the frequency, the audio frequency we're operating on. Next to that, we can see his signal report or current signal report uh, from the last time we heard him. Next to that is his grid locator, and finally, at the end of the uh, on, at the end of the line, we see the distance from my station according to his grid square. Those stations with the distance at the end of their lines have almost certainly sent out a beacon. In this way, we have the usefulness of whisper beacons with the keyboard-to-keyboard -keyboard chat capabilities of FT8 expanded. So let's move back over to Gil and see what's going on there. So if you look at the smaller gray text, that's actually the text I'm transmitting out. And I sent Gil a reply to his message, but I also sent a second message saying, uh, let's move to the frequency I'm on now to avoid the unintentional QRM from those two stations. Because I requested an acknowledgement from Gil, he sent an ACK and a reply to say he was on frequency. And to be quite forthcoming, there's a lot of useful practical tools built into FT8 call like this. Tools, in my opinion, making FT8 call an excellent utility for grid down group communications. Now again, I don't want to sound like a parrot, but the primary goals of FT8 call are to provide a mechanism for keyboard to keyboard messaging and a robust mesh network for group communications. And in fact, that's the next point I make uh, in my response to Gil. So the mode is slow, but it's incredibly effective. While we wait for that message to send out, let's move over to the left side of the screen, which shows you the band activity. So this part of the screen is simply giving you all the band activity at a glance. 
And this remains true despite being on a different frequency or being in an active chat with another station. So I would say almost all of the information on this part of the screen is redundant, but it's displayed in an easier to understand way. So in the first column, we have the frequency of the activity. In the second column, we have when that activity was last heard. The third column is a signal report. The fourth column is the messages between those stations or happening on that particular frequency. We can also set up unique background colors or highlight colors so that we can at a glance understand what type of activity is happening across the band. This part of the screen also allows you to customize the sorting, for example, by uh, strongest station heard or last station heard, uh, newest station, oldest station, and so on. I don't recall any ham radio apps ever going this far with the user interface. Anyway, let's get back to Gil. It seems the QSO with Gil lasted about 15 to 20 minutes, and there was a lot of band activity going on around us all the time. Again, with the exception of some QRM from time to time, I received Gill's messages with 100% copy. Now, going back to the idea of using FT8 call for grid down communications. When I'm talking about using FT8 call for grid down communications, I'm talking about for the individual, for preparedness groups, for survival groups, for family members. Individuals or groups who have come up with a communications plan and need a mode allowing them to get the message in and out of the area without any infrastructure. Now, the station list in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you can see it updating from time to time. Those stations are sending out their beacons. Imagine surviving a disaster and now the grid is down. According to your communications plan, you're going to set up your station when you have the opportunity to do so. Now, just like those other stations you see in the lower right-hand corner, you start transmitting your beacon as well. Other radio operators in your group and according to their communications plan are also running FT8 call and listening for your beacon. Perhaps you had to evacuate from the area you were in. Well, that's absolutely fine. FT8 call allows you to update your grid square with anything from 4 to 16 digits. You can then send that out as an all call, uh, as a beacon, or as an APRS message outside of the disaster area to get your message onto APRS.fi or other services like it. And from your perspective, the only infrastructure required is your computer and your radio. Of course, we can also use FT8 call for casual chat, and a lot of operators are doing that. Now, before we reach the end of the video, there's a few things to point out. Gil is also going to publish a video from his perspective. I don't know what the topic will be, but of course, you already know my uh, perspective is grid down communications. So, do I think FT8 Call is a valuable tool for grid-down disaster communications for an individual or group? Absolutely, I do. The caveat is the operator needs to understand that this is a networking mode, not just a modulation mode. Is FT8 Call a valuable tool for the portable operator? I would again say absolutely but Gil and I are going to try to coordinate a portable-to-portable FT8 call QSO, record that, and present it on our channels, respectively. Now, before we reach the end of this video, uh, please remember to check the description. I'm going to leave you a link to Gil's video and other information related to FT8 call and my station. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to my handheld camera and show you the final exchange between Gil and I. Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that the Radio Prepper and I work quite closely together when possible. So please do me a favor and check out his channel and support him if you find it interesting. I'd also like to hear your opinion on grid down communications using FT8 Call. What you think about this mode, even if you don't agree, uh, 
give me your arguments or your perspective and uh, let's talk about it in the comments. Perhaps you have an idea or there's something you think is missing from FD8 call that would take it to the next level. Alright guys, that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. Look, for those of you supporting the channel, you are absolutely magnificent. Thank you so much. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a thumbs up and a comment to let me know. And if it's at all possible, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.